Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. This week we've been talking about the three levels of spirituality as defined in the Bible. We've covered the natural man, we've covered the carnal man, and today we're talking about the spiritual man. Get ready. Drop the Today's topic that we're discussing is called the spiritual man. Again, today's topic that we're talking about is called the spiritual man. This week, we dedicated three days to talk about the three different spiritual states a person can be in as described in the Bible. On Monday, we talked about the natural man. On Tuesday, we talked about the carnal man. And today, we're talking about the spiritual man. And recap, what is the natural man? The natural man is someone who is spiritually dead or spiritually separated from Christ because they have not received their salvation. In other words, they haven't invited Jesus into their life to be their personal Lord and Savior, which the Bible describes to us as being born again. That's what the natural man is. The carnal man is someone who has received their salvation, but they're referred to as a babe in Christ because they're still living by the ways and desires of the world. They're still living like the world. In fact, if you met these two different people on the street, you wouldn't know that one was saved and the other wasn't if you looked at their behaviors because they act and behave the same way. The only difference is that the carnal man has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they haven't developed any type of spiritual maturity to separate them from the world. So, when a person gets saved, they still have all their old nature upon them. In other words, it tells us that the old has been cast away and the new has come on. But the fact is, if someone used profanity a whole lot or smoked a whole lot or drank a whole lot or, I don't know, had some type of destructive behavior before getting saved, and they go to church on a Wednesday night service and they accept their Jesus as their Lord and Savior and get born again, that doesn't mean Thursday they're going to wake up and they don't curse anymore or use profanity anymore. They don't smoke anymore. They don't desire to drink anymore. That's not what that means. The old man inside them has died and the new man has been born again, but you then must grow in to your spirituality. And by growing into your spirituality, just like when you're a child and you grow up and grow into bigger clothing, that's the same thing that happens as a believer. When you get saved, you start off as a babe in Christ. You then, as you start to grow spiritually, you'll move into a child of Christ. And, or I shouldn't say a child of Christ, but you move into childhood and eventually you move into adulthood on the way to maturity. That is what it means to be a spiritual man. The spiritual man understands their rights as a believer. In fact, the spiritual man and growing in the things of the word is starting to develop Christ's character on the inside of them. And the more they develop Christ's character on the inside of them, the more they understand His promises and His Word, the more they understand how their authority as a believer can operate, and they start to operate in that authority to overcome the wicked one. You know, many times we'll talk with people and they'll say, you know, man, I'm just underneath this attack or I have this temptation and I don't know how to get past it or overcome it. Well, the Bible tells us in the Word that to submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee. That is talking about spiritual maturity. As you submit yourself to God, that means submitting the desires of your flesh over to God. De submitting the temptations, the desires, the destructive behaviors, submitting it over to God, and then you resist the devil in those areas, and he has to flee. That's a spiritual promise in God's Word. As a spiritual man, that does not mean that you are perfect. That does not mean you're not going to make mistakes. And that does not mean that once in a while you may not flesh out. Okay, But what that does mean is that you are spiritually controlled. In other words, you are no longer controlled by your emotions and your feelings, but you are now controlled by your spirit. In fact, if I were teaching on spiritual alignment today, I would tell you that the correct order is that your spirit is at the highest level. Beneath your spirit is your soul, which is comprised of three things, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And beneath your soul is your body. That's why sometimes when we're talking about healing of any kind, we teach people that their body doesn't tell their spirit 
what it feels. Their spirit tells their body what it feels because their body is under submission to their soul and their soul is under submission to their spirit and their spirit is under submission to the spirit and word of God. That's the correct alignment of a believer. So as we talk about that and as the spiritual man, it's so important to understand that the spiritual man is developed over time with spending time in God's word, finding the truths in his word and submitting themselves to God to grow in the areas of their character that he's prompting them to grow in. You know, if you have friends around you, they may say, hey, you got an issue with pride or you got an issue with deceit or lying or, you know, you're you you operate by strife at times where you cause divisions between people. And maybe you do. And you need to go before God on that. But God will always be the one to set your course into play when you go before him and you seek him what you need to develop on. If you're spending time in his word, it's going to be easy to understand his character. And as a spiritual man, the reason why you're called a Christian once you become born again, the term Christian does not mean or or, or refer to a denomination. That's what the world has tried to tell us. What the Bible tells us a Christian is, is someone who is Christ-like. That is the very definition of that word. Someone who is Christ-like. In fact, when the phrase Christian first came about, it was with the church of Antioch, and they were trying to refer to the new believers in the book of Acts, and they didn't know how to refer to them now that they were spiritually saved, and so they started calling them Christians because they were Christ-like. So when you become born again or saved, as described in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you have become a Christian. And as you grow into that Christian-like character or that Christ-like character, you begin to take off the old and put on the new and grow in spiritual matters and spiritual ways. As you do that, you will grow and operate. And as people look at you, they may not always understand that it's Christ within you that they're sensing, but they'll always know there's something different about you. As a believer, we shouldn't be able to go in the world and be operating in a carnal or fleshy manner. And then when someone wants to talk about the Lord and we say, oh, well, I'm a believer. And the person look at you like, seriously, did you? See how you were just acting? (laughs) No, it should be that when we have opportunities to witness, we haven't blown our opportunity to witness by fleshing out or acting carnal like the carnal man or the unbeliever. We should have our emotions and feelings in check. We should be living by the Spirit, not walking in offense. And as we do that, as mature believers in Christ, When the opportunity to witness comes, it should always be easy because you led with your actions first, meaning that as they watched you, they understood there was something different about you. And now as you open your mouth to speak, that it's worthwhile waiting to listen to because they recognize something different in you from the rest of the world. That's what it means to be a spiritual believer. If you're wondering how long that takes, that's up to you. What I will tell you is that it's not about time. I have met believers who have been saved for 15 or 20 years, and they're still what I would refer to as a babe in Christ. They're still baby Christians. In other words, they put on their salvation and got saved, but they've never done anything to grow in the faith. Sometimes it's because they haven't been plugged into a good church where they could get fed the meat of the word and not just the milk of the word. You know, it tells us in the word that there are different levels of food for different levels of believer. Well, it could be that where you're at is not feeding you or you're not dedicating yourself to growing and what's being taught to you. You know, no one can spoon feed you as a baby. You're spoon fed. But as you grow up, you learn to pick up the spoon or the fork on your own and you learn to feed yourself. Guys, I hope you found this teaching encouraging today. As always, we want to remind you to go by our website at neilreyes.com where you can check out all of our resources. You can also connect with us on social media on YouTube or Facebook at Neil Reyes Ministries. Or you can follow us on Twitter at Neil underscore Reyes. We want to remind you that Jesus is Lord and He loves you and so do we. Thank you and have a blessed day.